Hey everyone, this is Zoraz, not casuals, and in today's video, I'm gonna give you a complete guide to Genshin Impact for beginners and new players. I'm gonna go over every single element of the game and I have compiled some of the most important tips and mistakes to avoid when you're just getting started in Genshin Impact. Make sure to look at the description where I will put chapters with timestamp of every single element of this video so that you can navigate easily and find the tips that you are looking for specifically. So first, I want to talk about the gacha system. Now, if you do not know what gacha means, it is basically a description of this game where you unlock your characters through a lock system where you draw a random amount of cards and one of them might be a champion or might be an item of a higher level or higher rarity. Now, the way this works, as you can see here, is you have different ways of spending and you have two different currencies. So this currency, the Acquaint Fate, is the currency that lets you unlock most of the gacha in this game and this is the standard bundle called the wish so the standard wish and every time you do 10 of them you get a guaranteed four star or higher now there are up to five star uh, characters such as these ones like gene and diluc which are very very powerful characters now we also have special event so this is a special character event wish where you get to spend the other currency which is called intertwined fate and you have a higher chance of getting certain characters such as in this case you have a chance of getting venti at a higher rate now the way that it works in order to get these fates you have to either play the game and find them as reward from different objectives such as getting a high adventure rank or doing some hard content later on in the game you will also get a lot of those things for free at the beginning during the launch event which is happening right now so if you are thinking of playing this game right now is the time to make an account in order to get as many of these as possible now the other way of doing this is using primal gem which is a special currency that you will get in this game from playing the game you will get hundreds of those every day by just doing dailies and objectives and missions and dungeons now you can also use money to buy this currency as you can see here you can transform genesis crystals which you basically buy with money in the shop and you can convert them in a one-to-one -one ratio to primal gem now if you go into the shop right here you will see where you can buy them so for example here you have all of the different bundles and you will get bonuses and you'll get a double reward the first time you buy and then you get bonuses afterwards you also have the option of purchasing these uh, fates here like in the payments bargain or you can go in these exchange for star glitter or stardust which as you can see i have a few of those and you will get these specifically when opening wishes and getting duplicates or just by opening a special character it will give you a little bit of dust from the opening now you can turn these into more of these items specifically so as you can see here i could spend five of those here and buy one of these intertwined fate which is a very good deal and i'm gonna do it right away now in the stardust exchange you also have a way of spending this currency here for uh, five of these and five of these and these reset every week so in two days i can do it again so it is very good to hold on to these for that reason because it is very easy free way of getting more of these guys now the shop also includes a package here that will give you some crystal and primal gem every day and you can also spend some of this uh, currency in some of these starter bundles which give you experience and enhancement or some mora and some resin now the next major part of this game is called the adventure rank so as you can see it is here it is basically the level of your account it doesn't have to do with their characters it is where you are in the game so it will keep going up it will never go down and it is just your entire account that has that level now if you click on it here for example you will see that your world level will increase along with your adventure rank which means that the world boss and mobs will get harder and the chest will drop better rewards as you go along now this will increase many times during your game there is many world level as you increase your adventure rank higher and higher and the main part of the adventure rank is here when you come to the main city you will see that there's a receptionist here for the adventure rank that gives you special rewards for it so for example by getting adventure rank 13 i unlock all of these rewards including one of these fates which 
it will get me an opening for a character. Now, if you go higher in your adventure rank, you will see that you will unlock a lot of very useful materials and items. And once you reach level 16, you will unlock the co-op system, which will let you play with up to four players or three of your friends in one world. Getting further into adventure rank will unlock more and more rewards, which you will not see right now. But the level 20 is usually the first milestone where you get to increase your world level and unlock a lot of the content that is currently available in the game. Now, there is many ways of increasing your adventure rank. The main ways are simply by doing quests, doing objectives, uh, doing dungeons such as this one, for example. You see, this is 200 adventure XP. So whenever you see this, this is adventure XP. You will get a very high amount of adventure XP from following the main quest line. So when you go into your quest here, you will see that by doing some of the main quests, I'm getting 325 here. If I do this one, 425. Now this one, 175. So following your quest in general is one of the best way to do the adventure rank leveling up. Now, as I said, on top of that, a very good way of getting adventure XP is exploring everything. So every one of these teleport waypoints gives you an adventure rank amount of XP. And every one of these statue of the seven also gives you a higher amount of adventure rank XP. Every one of these dungeons, all the quests, all the mobs that have special chests that are around the world, they will all give you adventure rank XP. So basically doing anything in this game will give you adventure rank XP. So whenever you see a rare mob, whenever you see a chest, go open everything, click on everything, pick up everything. For my next tip, I want to highlight how important doing the main quest is. Now, if you are just getting started, start by doing the main quest because it is how you will unlock some of the content and you will get up to four characters for free. So you'll get the first party where you have a few different elements. So that's Amber, that's Kaya, and that's Lisa along with your traveler. So you will have these four characters completely for free by simply following the quest. Now, on top of that, it is where you'll get the most amount of rewards and value to increase your power and have a smoother experience in the game. Now, on top of that, if you click here at the little book, it will be your adventure book. Now, you will see that in this book, there will be a lot of different other objectives and quests that you must do for, again, a lot of adventure rank XP. And now you see once you've done it, you will get to claim extra rewards here, such as Primal Gems. And once you do that, you'll get a new chapter and there will be more and more of these objectives and stuff to claim. Now, on top of that, you will also unlock commissions where you will have to do four daily quests every day, which once you do them, not only do you get a ton of XP and Primal Gem, but you also get a bonus here that you will get to collect and has very, very cool items and really, really good value. Now, another thing that is very important is you will have this resin so it is you will see it on your world map as well as in this book you get up to 120 of it and it refreshes over time now you in this book will be able to find many different ways of spending it so for example doing this for this reward will cost me 20 resin and i can do this over and over now the same thing goes for this one this one has experience books and some of this here are basically just bosses that you will get to go and hunt for special material as you will see here these are very important because they will allow you to level up and ascend some of your characters later on so this is where you're going to find a lot of this and where to find these materials and you can even navigate to them through this interface now if you go lower here you will see that there's also other ones so these big bosses which are very very important because you will need these resources to ascend your characters you will see these cost 40 resin to kill and they are on a timer so you can't do them as many times as you want so it is very important that you come in your book here and you pay attention to what you're required to do and what you can do and you go and do them because same for all these guys once you kill them there'll be a cooldown and a timer so it is very important that you go around and use your resin and use their timers in a way that's efficient and you don't let it go to waste now if we're going to go on the world map you will also see that I can see these ley line outcrops. This is what we just looked into Adventure Book, and it will tell me where they are on the map, when I can navigate to them and go and do them. It is also telling me where the resin cost is, and you can see the resin is up here. Now, as you unlock more and more of this world, you will see there is more and more of these daily stuff that will be scattered around. Now, you will also see these dungeons later on as you unlock them, where the rewards that are possible will change daily, and they will cost you an amount of resin to do. But if you look, 
they will give you some of these special talent level up materials which cannot be gotten in many other ways so you will have to be on the lookout for where you get these and that is how you're going to spend some of your resin every day now last as i mentioned you will see that the commissions are around the map here so this is the purple dot here now you get four of them every day and it is absolutely necessary that you do them every single day because they are one of the best sources of reward for the game now once you've done all of them you will go back to the city here and you will turn it into adventurers guild and this is how you're going to get the rewards that i just showed you earlier here so if you go here the commission rewards see i'm three out of four so once i do the last one this is how i'm going to get all of this reward and this is one of the best way to level up your adventure rank early on now next one of the most important aspect of genshin impact is the open world exploration as you go around the world, you'll see that there's all these glowing things such as ores. There will also be a lot of different cooking materials such as flowers, fruits, for example, all these berries. There is a lot of stuff in this game and you must pick up everything you see, including chests, including rare mobs, fight everything, pick up everything. You are greatly rewarded for doing so. Now, also in this game, there are special items such as these ones. You see, I can't pick it up because it is not an option. What that means is that you have to use a certain element in order to unlock it. So, for example, here, if I use a wind element of venti, see, something happened and now I can pick up these dandelion seeds. Now, there is different elements and different ones of these for every element. Uh, these are very important to pick up when you see them because they will be used in ascension material and some special crafting later on in the game and they are rarer to find around the world now as i mentioned there is different flowers for all the elements so for example this one is the fire one and i cannot pick it up either but if i use barbara which is a water character and i do some abilities here there you go flaming flower so as I said, this is very important. You really should be on the lookout for these ones and have the correct characters in your inventory in order to be able to pick them up and use the element needed for it. Now, this is something I cannot stress enough. Picking up everything you find will really help you long term because you will have all the materials needed when you are trying to upgrade certain characters and items and it will really, really help you out. I want to put a special emphasis on picking up mining nodes such as iron, white iron, crystal. There is a lot of different ones and they are very, very required in this game to enhance your equipment and craft four star equipment. So whenever you see any of these, you must pick it up. Now to pick up iron nodes or any other materials that is a mining node, you need either a two handed great sword weapon such as the one that I have on Diluc or a geo character that can use its geo abilities on the nodes now there's also these special nodes for example which are uh, you cannot pick them up and you, if you attack them you'll take damage these ones specifically require fire damage and you see i got an electro crystal from it now there is different ones of these all around again but again using the right element on them will unlock them and will let you have access to gathering it now while we're on the subject of exploring and picking up everything one of the really important things that you must pick up are these teleportation waypoints they are scattered all around the map and they are very important to pick up because first it will help you travel easier and when you pick it up you see i get 50 adventure rank xp and five primal gem now if we go and look at the map you can see that they are everywhere see all of these they're all teleportation waypoints so as you can see in this zone that i haven't even explored yet there are so many of them all around so that's a lot of xp and primal gems for free and just a way of teleporting that's very easy for you now while we're on the topic of gathering and picking up everything you see my next tip is about marking everything you see and pick up what does that mean so for example i just gathered these electro crystals which are pretty rare and if you look at the map here i don't have any clues or ways of knowing that there is electro crystal in this area so what you do is you just click on the map and there i can mark it with a custom pin I can just write electro crystal and now I will have a pin here that lets me know that when I'm playing the game here there's electro crystal. So if in a week or two I'm like oh man I need a lot of electro crystal to craft this item. Now I have pins around the map that tells me where I have gathered them. Now you can do this for any materials. It is very recommended that you do it for mining nodes because this is one of the most important thing in the game to craft weapons. But you can do it for special flowers and you can do it for literally anything. 
one thing that is also very important to mark as you can see here i have a custom marker for a frost boss flower now let's see what that looks like see there you go this is a very good boss that drops very good material that will be needed for a lot of stuff in the game now he's level 40 which i cannot beat right now so i have dropped a pin here to remind myself that this boss is there now with all these materials and boss or anything else that you mark there is a respawn time I don't have the exact number because it's different for every one of them but some of them will respawn every day some of the nodes will respawn every few hours and some of them will probably respawn every week it will be different but if you have them marked it will be a lot easier to check them out now one of the reasons this is so good to do when you're marking special bosses specifically is that if you're going to play co-op with your friends you will be able to all join one world now you can go from one marker to the other with your teammates in your co-op world and kill all these bosses and get all the rewards now you can then join one of the other players in your team's world and it will be reset. All of these bosses will be there. So if you have them all marked, you can go from one world to the other and farm the materials, nodes, flowers, iron, bosses. Everything can be done multiple times in co-op world. That is basically what the co-op is for in this game. Now the next thing that I want to talk about that is super important that you pick up whenever you see are these animoculus. Now they're usually flying around at many places in the world there's a lot of them to pick up and they will appear on your minimap right here you can see that there's a little uh, star that appears this will always be shown in your minimap when you're near one of them now these are very important to pick up they are the way that you're going to be able to increase your stamina in this game and the way that you will do that is once you have collected enough of them as you can see you just go through them and that is how you collect them now once you have enough of them you will simply go to any of the statue of the seven around the world anywhere it doesn't matter and you will turn them in now when you are there you just talk to it and you will do basically what is called worship statue and you see that i have 13 of them right now and i can turn them in to gain a level and this will increase my stamina and give me a lot of adventure xp so if i do it all at once you'll see that i'll probably gain two level so my stamina has now increased to 146 which is a very much higher amount than what i had before and i will gain tons of rewards and tons of uh, materials and now you can see that i need 10 more to get the next level and this goes on for quite a while in every single zone they all have their different animal colors to gather now this is something that is absolutely primordial you must be gathering them all the time because stamina is what else you walk run and fly you can see this yellow bar right here that is stamina so the more you have the longer you can run the longer you can swim and the longer you can glide which is absolutely crucial in this game because movement is a big part of this open world now while we're talking about animal clothes, something that you must do when you gather them is put a marker on them now this is where i just was this is my marker i just put them everywhere around the map now you can see that i have them everywhere here this is basically to let me know that i have gathered the animal of that location because online there is these interactive maps that show you the location of every single one of those around the world and when you are going to be missing like four or five at the end and you'll be where are they where are the ones that i missed if you haven't marked any of them you'll have to check every single location one by one to find only a few now if you've been marking them from the beginning you can then go on the interactive map and check out which one you've already gathered so that you can find the ones that you're missing which will be very very helpful and time saving for you i will put a link in the description for this interactive map if you're interested so make sure to check the description for that now my next tip is going to be about characters and how you level them up how you use their artifact and how you make them very strong now in this game especially if you're a free-to-play player you will be able to unlock quite a few characters with all the bonuses that are being given at the beginning but you will not be able to level them all up and ascend them all and upgrade all their weapons you see that i have plenty of characters already myself and i cannot have them all at level 20 or plus because the xp cost and the time investment to gather all the materials needed to ascend them for example will be hard to achieve for multiple characters now the best way to play this game is to focus on a select few characters now there's tons of tier lists online there's tons of different strategies now one thing to know is that almost every character in this game is good it is really about your play style one thing that's really important is that you should mix 
quite a few elements together in order to create a good party. It is always good to have one that's strong, doing just base DPS by auto-attacking, strong ones with uh, magic and elements that interact together to create a balanced party. I recommend that you focus on a few characters, level them up and ascend them. Even if it's only one or two, they will be your primary damage dealers. And then you will do the same thing for their weapon. So for example, here my weapon is level 20 out of 20 and I have the option of ascending it, which I will do right now. And then I will be able to take it to level 40. But that also means that you see that these are the materials that I can use to create a higher weapon level. But if I use them all, I will eventually run out and I won't have enough to do this for every single weapon, which will make it so that if I bake a little bit of XP in five different weapons, there'll be five weak weapons instead of having one very strong one. Now, it's very, very beneficial to have one stronger weapons and to refine it. So you can see mine is refined to rank five, which is the max level, which increases my damage to pyro enemies, which is what I am. So this is going to be very good for me. Now, a very strong blue weapon that is refined is better than a four star weapon that is not refined and not leveled up. So it is very good at the beginning that you focus on a few things and not try to spread yourself too thin on too many different things. Now, lastly, something else that is very good is that on your main damage dealers, the ones who will be using their auto attack the most, you will be able to have obviously artifacts equipped for them. And it is always good to try and get some bonus sets. So you can see I have two, two set bonuses here, which are good for damage dealing, which is what I'm doing. But one tip that I can give you is that the feather or the plume here, this is very important because this is always going to give you the attack statistic here. So you can see they all have different attack. So it is one of those that you should try and focus on getting good ones. Now we have a video that shows you where to get a free four star feather that you can get right at the beginning completely free by just talking to an NPC. So you can get this and then use it on some of your characters. And I would focus my enhancement on these ones first. Every time you level one of these by four level, so level four, level eight, level 12, they'll get an extra statistic added to the item. And it will also increase the damage that it deals. So see 102 to 113. So you will not be able to have enough materials to do this for every single artifact you have. But if you're gonna do it for any artifact, I recommend you do it for the feather first because this is where you're going to get the most amount of damage value for free at the beginning which will obviously help you clear monsters much easier and make this character stronger now you see when i got it to level 8 now i unlocked 15 defense on top of it so this just keeps adding and adding more effects so when you are leveling artifacts up it is recommended that you do it in chunks of four so you see this is level four this is level four now this is level nine so eight four twelve these are the ones you should be focusing on and it is not bad idea to put all of your items when you have a good set at level four for your main characters now also when you're building a team comp if you go in the party option here you will see that you can click on elemental resonance up here which basically will let you know the bonuses that you will get for having different elements so for example, having two pyro in my team makes it so that I am affected by cryo for 40% less time and all of my characters have 25% increased attack, which is very good for melee auto attackers. So that is why I'm using two pyros, I'm doing a lot more damage. Now you can see that there is different effects, so two waters gives this effect, so more healing. You can also have two winds to have increased movement speed and reduced stamina consumption, which is very, very good. As you can see, there's a lot of them for every element. Or you can use four different elements and just get more resistance to everything. Now this is something that's very important in this game because elements is the basics of this game. Now when you are building your party it's important that you mix different elements together because that is going to be not only giving you bonuses but when you're also playing in the game different elements interact with each other in different ways. So what I mean by that is basically the entire core of this game's damage system is not only just doing attacks like this and doing white damage and some abilities, it is mixing them together. Now you can see these enemies now, it's raining, so they are all affected by the blue water here, so they are currently in water form. Now if I mix a fire ability, you will see that on my screen, the vaporize effect which will be doing a very, very high amount of damage. Now, this is how you do most of your damage. See Vaporize everywhere, and they all took 500 something damage. Now, of course, they're weak monsters, but this is how you must play in this game. You have to mix elements together in order to get big combos and big damage, because otherwise you will do weak damage and you will not be very good. 
Now, if I do wind with water, for example, you'll see it says swirl right here. So swirl just means that you're spreading the damage AOE to everything around it. So you can mix fire with water for a vaporize. You can also mix it with ice for another effect. You can mix electricity with water to electrocute mobs. Now, there is a lot of different elements and different effects in this game, and you can discover them all. There's also a lot of spreadsheets and guides online that show them all. But it is very important that you try and switch characters a lot and use like, see, for example, I can use fire, then I'd use wind, then I could use my water character and create different effects and combos, which obviously is the core of this game and you will discover it as you play. But you must play with this and utilize this because if you just focus on white normal damage attack like this for sword attacks, you will not be very strong when you need to be in the later of the game. Now, the last thing I want to talk about in this game is consumable. As you can see, if you go and cook, you can do this at campfires or in the cities. You'll have a lot of different items that you can cook with the materials that I told you to gather earlier. Now, you will see that some of these are just healing, which you can do in the middle of a combat, by the way. You can pause and heal yourself when you're doing single player stuff. And some of them are going to increase your party's attack for a certain amount for five minutes and plus. And you'll have other ones that increase your defense. And this one increases the crit rate and attack which is very very strong and some of them will simply revive the characters that you lose so these are all very very important because it is very good buffs and it's free because you just gather these materials around you can also craft some of these materials here that you will need uh, basically you refine them and you can go to vendors that sell food such as this one for example and they will sell some of these items already that you can just buy and use as you go now, these are very important for harder content in the game, especially when you want to revive characters in the middle of the combat when you've lost them. You will have later on craftable ones that revive them for almost full HP. So that is going to be very, very useful. Now, another thing that's very useful is that you will be eventually able to craft stamina boosting food. And you see that now I'm climbing and my stamina is going down. Now, if you get climbing up high enough and you have almost no stamina left for example here you'll see i'm climbing and now oh my stamina is very low now if i drop i could take damage or die now you could go and pause and just go in your inventory you press i or go in the menu for example here and then you can go and consume some of this food that will be here and some of it will restore your stamina which will make it so that when you're climbing you're not dying you will be able to restore the stamina and then keep on climbing and then that way you will be saving yourself a lot of trouble when climbing big hills now, one other thing that is very important to keep in mind when you're crafting is there's a character selection here, which you can click on and you'll see that you'll have different characters that have bonuses. Now, when I'm doing alchemy, I have no character with bonuses, but if we go over to the food vendor, for example, if I were to craft something that gives um, attack, here you go, you can use Xiangling here. And you'll see, there you go, Xiangling cooks an attack boosting dish perfectly. There's a chance of receiving the product twice. So perfectly means that when you're cooking, you have to stop it in this little yellow area, which will give you a perfect item, uh, which is usually just better at doing what it does. And now, as we saw, I have a chance of doubling the amount of this that I get. So I can craft a few. And when I get it perfect, once in a while, I'll get two of them instead of one. Now, this will be very valuable later on in the game because you'll be crafting a lot of this to revive and boost yourself when doing hard content. Now, lastly, when we're talking about crafting and consumable, there is also the blacksmith here that creates weapons for you out of materials that are ores and these prototypes that you will see, you will gather from daily quests and rare stuff in the game. You can see that you can get these prototypes that will let you craft some of these weapons. And then this is how you're going to be able to craft multiple versions and refine them to get them stronger. Now, again, there is going to be characters in here sometimes eventually that you will unlock that will help you craft these ones. And you can also see that you can create these ores, which are enhancements for your weapons by turning some chunks of ores into them. Now, I do not recommend doing this because you will be needing a lot of ores to craft these really good four star weapon. So you don't want to be turning them into enhancement stuff when you can be turning them into four star weapons. Now, lastly, my tip about the blacksmith is you can also ask him what he has to sell and he will be selling you some green weapons every day that are basically useless, but you can use them to transform your weapon and make them stronger. You're basically it's currency to increase your weapons power, which is completely free because you just buy it for a few more right here, which is very cheap and you get five green items every day to boost your other items. So that's something you should be doing every day that is very, very valuable for you.
you'll see that his apprentice also sells items now those are white quality items they're even worse but again you will be needing so many of these to refine and increase all of your weapons uh, ability and power level so it is not a bad thing to be buying these every day it is a very cheap amount of mora and you will be using these like you have no idea later on when you're crafting very strong weapons you'll need hundreds of these to make a level in that weapon so this is going to be something that's very valuable for you now, one other tip about the vendors in the city is that you'll see that these vendors with the little gem icon here, they have special currency and special items. Now, the currency you gather from doing almost every content in the game, and you will have a lot of it, so don't be afraid of wasting it. And you'll see that they drop all of this stuff that you need for enhancing some of your characters, for example. So I need one of those right now to enhance uh, one of my characters, and I need one of those to enhance my other win character. Now, I know about this because I looked into my inventory before, and I knew that I needed this. But you can see that I can buy a lot of them, and it's very useful. You can also buy these ones would increase your weapons, so you can level up your weapon to where you want them. And also, you can see I can buy one of these four-star prototype thing to craft a weapon. Now, we have a video that shows you the location of these vendors all around. Just check out in the description. I will put the video there. You have another vendor that sells the prototype for every type of weapon, not only the sword. So if you want one of the other type of weapon, go check it out. The vendor is in the second city, basically. Now, the last thing I want to talk about is if you come at the adventure rank place, you will see that there is an option for expedition. Now, you will unlock this when you adventure rank 12, I believe, or 15. And once you have unlocked this, you see that you can send your characters on expeditions of up to 20 hours and gather some materials. Now, you see that my Amber is currently gathering a 20 hour one, three hours left. And she will bring me 8 to 12 of both of these, which are very good to craft items such as consumable for food. And for example, here, my other guy has gone for 13 hours now, and he will be bringing me some crystals and ores when I need them. Now, this is something that's very, very important that you do every day when you go to bed. Or you see, I don't use these characters. They're level one. I don't need them. So this must be always going on all the time. Now, there's also the second zone, which has different materials and different items. And it is very important that you gather them, especially the ore for the beginning when you want to craft new weapons. This is also going to be increasing the limit. Eventually, you will see that you will be able to send more and more of them. And some of them have bonuses that will make it so that it takes less time to be gathered. So this is about it, guys, for my beginner's guide. Of course, there is a lot of information here. So make sure to check the description and see all of the different chapters where I list everything that I've mentioned. I'm also going to be attaching a huge file of text, which will be explaining all of this in text form instead of video form, if that is helpful for you. Now, make sure to come in the comment section of this video if you want to ask us any questions. We answer every comment. So ask your questions right away here in this comment video section. And you can also come on Not Casual's Discord server, which is also in the description, and come and ask us your questions there directly. Also, keep in mind that we stream this game on YouTube and Twitch. Uh, sporadically throughout the week so you can come and tune in live and come ask us your questions live and as well make sure to subscribe to this channel because there is going to be a lot of Genshin Impact content and guides coming out in the future and we all have an entire playlist full of guides already to help you out so make sure to check that out in the description as well thank you guys for watching and I hope you guys enjoy this game as much as we do because it is incredible and it is blowing up fast this is one of the most popular game in the world right now, and it is one of the most streamed game in the world right now. So make sure to check it out. It's completely free to play, and you do not need to spend to enjoy this game. But if you spend a little bit, you will get a lot of enjoyment from it as well.